Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Have you recently gone through the club fitting process, picked up your brand new sticks, and played a couple rounds to only realize that the golf clubs isn't performing like they did during the club fitting session? So before you chalk it up to a bad day, poor technique, or worse yet, your club fitter pulled a wool over your eyes and sold you a bill of empty promises, you're gonna to wanna to stay with me to the end because I'm going to share a little fitting approach we like to follow in our studio and it's called the post fit process. So if I grabbed your attention, let's roll up our sleeves to find out more. Now full transparency, the post fit process is really nothing more than an analysis of how your final built golf clubs is performing for you. I mean, the reality is, is that the golf club that you hit during the fitting session was just a sample of what we were to build. So it's pulled out of the fitting matrix and it's one of our demo heads and one of our demo shafts. And then we capture all of the specs off of the final build and create what we call a blueprint. And this does become our instructions on how we need to assemble and build your golf clubs. But from time to time, there might be a situation where a little refinement will be needed. And this is the reason why we include a free post fit consultation to all of our customers who go through the club fitting process. And although we know this will vary from one fitter to the next and some fitting establishments may elect to charge for a post fit analysis. And if they do, I still believe it's worth its weight in gold because it's your opportunity to trust but verify to make sure that your golf clubs are performing the way they should. Now, before we get too deep, I do want to take a quick second to welcome any new visitors to the channel. So if this happens to be your first time and you would like to learn more about the club fitting process, I mean, really gain a better understanding of why and how a club fitter may do certain things to help their customers change the shot outcome, then I can assure you, you've come to the right place. And all you gotta do is consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell so that way you receive an alert for any new content that we drop. So let's jump in and take a look at our first post fit analysis, which is a senior golfer with an average swing speed of about 77 to 78 miles an hour with his seven iron. Now this is an iron fitting that we recently did for the customer and we moved them into the brand new set of Strixon ZX4, the Mach 2 versions. So if you've seen the original versions versus the new ones, it's night and day difference. And we do love the new Strixon ZX4 Mach 2s, for our senior golfers. So anybody that's struggling with a little bit of speed or needs assistance getting the ball in the air to carry it a little bit farther, these have really been a game changer for a lot of our customers, especially when you factor in that unique V-sole design. So it doesn't really matter if you're steep or you're shallow with it, it really does have something for everybody. Now, after playing a couple rounds with his brand new irons, the customer reported back that he was having some gapping challenges in specific with the five and six iron as well as the nine iron and pitching wedge. And once speed does start to drop off, we do lose that ability to create the velocity and lift we need to keep the ball in the air. And sometimes this can create challenges, especially at both ends of the spectrum. So it's really not uncommon for us to see this. So when we took the customer through the gapping analysis, sure enough, customer was hitting it pretty damn straight, but the distance between the five and six iron was pretty tight. And the same thing with the nine iron and a pitching wedge. In order to make it a little bit better, we needed to make some loft adjustments. Now, when we take a look at the loft specs that we built the customer's irons to, you're gonna notice that we followed the traditional loft progression throughout his entire set. So it was pretty dang on consistent, four degrees of separation between every single golf club. The five iron checked in at 21 degrees, the pitching wedge checked in at 41 degrees. And with these distances being as tight as they were between the five and the six and the nine and the pitching wedge, we knew we had to tweak the lofts. So what we did to make it better with the five and six is we added two more degrees of loft. We took it from 21 to 23 with the thought process of trying to create a little bit more lift and launch to get the ball to stay airborne longer because we only really needed to make up five yards. And the general rule of thumb is, is that for every degree of loft you add or take away, you're going to add or take away two and a half yards. 
But what we have found in the Strix iron irons, it's like the exact opposite. We almost need more loft to do exactly what we need because it has to offset that center of gravity location. And that is exactly what and how we were able to find the extra five yards at the top end of the bag. Now in regards to the bottom end of the bag, we had to do the exact same thing, but for a different reason. Meaning we had to take the pitching wedge from 41 degrees to 43. And here the thought was is to create more spin so that way it can pull the ball out of the air sooner and faster. And no sooner than we did that, were we able to get the ball out of the air five yards quicker. So full disclaimer, generally when we follow the four degrees of law progression, we usually don't have to make any adjustments. It's usually set it, forget it type of thing. But there are the one-off scenarios where just like tonight, you might have to deviate from that of what the script tells you you should do. So as long as you're not afraid to color outside of the lines, you can actually achieve the results that we did. And just remember, don't get fixated on what the loft is. Just understand what the distance you're able to achieve by bending it to said loft. For our next post fit analysis, we have a mid handicapper in his late 40s with an average swing speed of about 83 to 84 miles an hour with his seven iron. And after playing a couple rounds with his Mizuno Pro 245s that we built for him, he called and stated, I'm having some issues, not only holding greens, but I'm actually struggling with a nasty miss to the left. And the only way I can hit my target is I have to aim a little bit more right than that of what I'm used to. So when we brought him back in for the post fit analysis, we had him hit his seven iron and sure enough, that is exactly what we saw. Little lower launch, little lower spin, as well as the ball was releasing a lot more and we knew that's just not optimal. But when we took a look at the original build specs versus what we built for the customer, there was one big difference. And that is about three days before picking up his golf clubs, the customer reached out and said, I'm kind of on a fence with the mid-size grip that we spec'd out. Would it be okay if we go to standard size grips because that's what I'm comfortable with. So we accommodated the customer's request. And since we already had the clubs built and they was just ready for grips, we had to actually add a little heavier counterweight to offset the weight difference between a standard size and a midsize. And this really allowed us to protect the swing weight. So we didn't really think there would be any issues whatsoever with doing so. But no sooner than we cut the standard size grip off and removed the counterweight and popped the midsize grip on, did the customer start achieving these results. So this is exactly what we saw during the fitting session and the simple explanation comes down to this. The little smaller grip created more range of motion for the customer that allowed him to close the face about two to three degrees more than that of what he usually does. And when we close the face down, we're also going to reduce the dynamic loft. And actually that's why we're gonna to get to lower launch and lower spin scenarios. When, when you take a look at the side by side from club path and face to path relationships, you notice a big difference here. So guys, at the end of the day, please understand it's okay to be on the fence. It's okay to deviate back to what you feel comfortable with as long as you have an open mind and we don't dispute what the numbers are telling us. And no sooner than we showed the customer what was going on and why it was happening, was he okay with going to the mid-size grip? So we truly hope you found value with the information that we share with you today. And if nothing else, we at least hope you walk away with this little golden nugget. And that's the only problem a club fitter can solve is the one he doesn't know about. So in the event that you're not happy with the golf clubs you've recently purchased, please do yourself a favor. Reach out to your club fitter to see if he offers a post fit analysis and who knows, you just might be surprised on what a little tweaking and tuning can do to get those clubs performing just like they did during a fitting session. So should you find yourself with any questions about today's video, then do me a favor, just leave them in the remarks below and I'll do my very best to help you find the answers to the questions you're searching for. And until next week, don't forget to take a look at one of these videos over here because who knows, there just might be some more golden nuggets that can continue to help you on your golfing journey. So until next time, thanks for watching.